Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I am Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video introduces some essential statistics vocabulary. Let's get started. Vocabulary provides a foundation for many fields of study, and statistics is no different. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the word statistics. Statistics is what I like to call the science of number crunching. You ask questions, plan ways to answer the questions, go get your data, work the magic that is statistics, convert your results into a conclusion any layman can understand, and then assemble and present your findings. Data are simply collections of observations. These observations can include measurements as well as non-numerical information. There are many types of data, as we will learn in future lectures. As we'll learn all throughout this course, data is everything. You can't make good decisions without good data. And data drives all the statistical models that we use to make and support conclusions. In my experience as an engineer, getting good data was always a challenge. Often this was because the people best positioned to provide the data have an alternative agenda. Sometimes this was because of cultural concerns. In Japan, for instance, failure is normally viewed as shameful. So getting failure data for failed Japanese power production units to feed our models was like pulling teeth from a cat. Other times, local conditions can prevent you from getting good data. I recall a unit for which we had very little data located in the Republic of Chad in Africa. Chad has seen much political instability over the years, so getting some Americans some data for their statistical models wasn't a high priority for people more concerned with personal security. In short, the real world is a very messy place where getting good data, or sometimes any data, is not always easy. This brings us to some really important terms that we will see over and over again throughout this course. A population is the complete collection of all measurements or data under consideration. It's the whole enchilada. Well, not that enchilada. Okay, you know what I mean. And yes, I do have food on the brain. Often in statistics, we want to know characteristics of the population. There are two ways of doing this. One way is to conduct a census. In a census, we collect measurements or data from every member of a population. This approach allows us to know what the characteristics of the population are with 100% confidence. However, for all but extremely small populations, obtaining data from every member of a population is extremely difficult, not to mention prohibitive in terms of both time and money. That's why, for many of our statistical adventures, we look to take a sample. In a sample, we collect measurements or data from only a selected portion of the population. This is much easier to do in terms of time and money, but we must take care that our sample sufficiently represents the larger population. Otherwise, our statistical analysis will lead us to faulty conclusions. Okay, this distinction between a population and a sample is fundamental in statistics. To help us understand these two concepts more thoroughly, let's take a look at an example. The Gallup Corporation collected data from 1,013 adults in the United States. Results showed that 66% of the respondents worried about identity theft. So in this example, the population is the entire set of adults in the United States, all 250 million or so of them. But the sample is only the 1,013 adults that were polled. So here we see that the sample is a portion or subset of the population. Why would we do this? Well, our end game in statistics is to use this sample to determine characteristics of the population 
without the exhaustive and prohibitive expense in terms of effort, time, and money necessary to obtain data from each and every member of the population. It's much easier if we can take a small sample and reveal the same characteristics. In the end, more data is usually better than less data, but realistically there comes a point where you can't spend any more money or time on your project. So there's usually some balance struck between the minimum sample size that the statistical analysis needs to have in order to reveal the characteristics of the population and the maximum sample size that you can afford. That brings us to the end of this mini lecture. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.